when the body is coming under attack. Let us be wise. I think I can go into my message now. Hmm? Thank you, sir. I can. Hallelujah. First Kings chapter 5. Let's see if we can do it quick. Pastor desires that we leave here by 8. Let me see if I can do a concise, condensed stuff. First Kings chapter 5 from verse 1. My guy on the console, what's going on? All right. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but... He was a leper. Not he is a leper, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away, and the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought away captive out of the land of Israel, a little maid, and she waited on Neman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover. For he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus has, thus and thus hears the maid that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took him 10 talents of silver and 6,000 pieces of gold and 10 changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel saying, now, when this letter is come unto thee, behold, I have dear with sent Naaman, Naaman, my servant, to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. And it came to pass, when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make a life that this man God sent unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. That word, he seeketh a quarrel against me, means, see, this is a strategy to begin to call for war. He is about to scuttle our treaty of peace. So he wants to bring us into war. See, he seeketh quarrel against me. And it came to pass, when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he sent to the king, saying, Wherefore, for what reason? Hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come unto me, and he shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. Help me tell your neighbor, let him come unto me, and they shall know that there is a prophet. How many men can come to you, and they will know that there is a representative of God here? Can men come to Soa City, and they will say, you are a representative of God? He said, let him come to me. Why do you have to rend your clothes? Let the man come unto me, and then he will know that there is a prophet in the land. In other words, in Syria at this time, it's possible that the place is out. Nobody is a custodian of the oracles of God. So in this place, in this clime, uh, I heard that there is a leprous man who had come to you. You remember that the intent of the word of the servant that they captured and took captive was not that they should send somebody to the king. The word was, oh, 
I would that you can go to the land of Israel, the land of my nativity, where I've been carried away as, where I've been taken away as what? A captive. If you go there, oh madam, I know that your husband's leprous condition will be resolved. And this morning I delineated for us um, the implication of the life of the man called Naaman. That Naaman was a honorable man. Naaman was a mighty man of valor. Na Naaman was a commander and Naaman has an identity. So there was no conflict in his person. There was no conflict of identity. There was no conflict of purpose and there was no conflict of loyalty. A Naaman was a commander. And I said to us that Naaman's life was open to the regiment of training. In order for you to become a commander in the army, what you call today the number one person in the military, all right? In the military cantonment, one man, the chief, is it the chief of army staff now? I think the president is the chief of army staff. Um, chief of armed forces, okay? So you come into that place, before you rise to that, 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 that rank as a commander, you would have been through a lot. Your, your loyalty, you will go through loyalty tests. You will go through mental tests. You will go through stress tests. You will go through health tests. You will go through all kinds of tests. And then you will go through drillings. You will go through chiselings to be able to come into that position. You must be a man that understands the strategy of war. You must understand the strategy of war. You must understand the demograph of where you are about to bomb. You, you know, you, you don't become a commander just in a day. And the Bible now said to us that in that season where this man, the man, was walking, the scripture said to us that they discovered that he was a leprous man. And in the season where they discovered that Neman was a leprous man, um, they have fought battles in Israel and they took some people. We send you out. And they took some people captive. It happens to be that one of the persons they took captive was a little girl. Please, if your phone is on, Quickly put it on silence, I beg you. It is high disregard. Not for me, but for God. So I want to give you one minute. Put off your... Either you put it off or you put it on silence. Let's respect the congregation. And so... He, he, began to, he began to walk as a man that has received command from the king. And then I said to us that how many of us believers can say that they are receiving command from their king? This guy was receiving command from his king. Now, what I didn't say to you this morning is this. Did you notice that, did you notice that before he got... A, a, an information from his wife. It was a servant that spoke. And I said to you this morning, I was going to open you up to steps that will lead to the seventh deep. Okay? Do you notice also that, um, Tony, that when he got the information from his wife, he went first to who? To the king. He went first to the king. He didn't assume that he has power. When he went to the king, did you notice that the king did not tell him, take camels, take gold, and take silver? Only, the only thing the king said to him is, take this letter and go and see the king. But the instruction that the young lady brought was not concerning the king, but concerning a prophet in the city. A prophet in the land. But what you need to see is that in the house of the king, there is abundance. Help me tell your neighbor, in the house of the king, there is abundance. So the first step to operating towards the seventh deep, when you are in situation, because you need to realize that what is informing the seventh deep or deepening seven times 
is infirmity. Are you with me? What is informing the decision to dip seven times is what? Infirmity. What is the name of this infirmity here? Leprosy. Thank you. The name of the infirmity in this story is leprosy. I don't have time. I would have taken you to Leviticus chapter 4, Leviticus chapter 5, and chapter 6 to show you the degrees of leprosy. That this disease has degree. It has degree. And nobody will be able to tell you the danger of this malignant situation or disease that you are carrying except through the life of a priest. And the life of a priest, the priesthood was meant to man the gate and ensure that this disease does not spread. Are you with me? So they ensure that this disease does not spread and then they look at you, they examine you, they examine your fingers, they examine your body, they examine the, 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 the outbreak Okay, they, they, they examine, not the outbreak, the breakout. Somebody say breakout. They examine the breakout on your body. If, they, if it's mild, if it's, if it's dangerous, if it's, if it's going to become an epidemic, and if it's going to degenerate into becoming a pandemic. All right? So once they notice, what they now do is they take you out and they put you in a place. But when you look at the life of Naaman, Naaman never used his, 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 um, his special case as an occasion for excuse. N rather, Naaman kept pushing. He kept advancing within the things that God has called him such that we were able to hear the testimony that says that it is by his hands that the Lord wrought many victories for Syria. Did you see that? Now, if you begin to journey with the Lord, what, where we got to was, so it was when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel tore his clothes, that he sent to the king saying, why have you, tore your, why have you torn your clothes? Please let him come to me and he shall know that there is a what? A prophet in Israel. Number one thing I need to say to you is, if you don't understand the issue of submission in the kingdom, you will walk in cycles. You will walk in cycles. If you don't understand the matters of submission, you will walk in cycles. The fact that God has given you authority and capacity it doesn't mean that you can stand up and begin to do the things the way you want them to do, the way you want to do them. It is important for you to understand the place of submission. What is submission? Submission is power under control. You have power, but that power is under control. How many of you know the electric pole? Do you know that if the power that is on the, in the, on the electric pole comes into this place, we all cannot sit here, that power has to be broken down into usable, usable units. When you go to a power place, where you have the total control, the control room of this place, where the, 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 the overall voltage is being warehoused. If you stand there, you will hear, you will, you will hear some, some speed. Have you seen where life, life, wire from, life wire from the pole drops on somebody? Have you seen it before? You have not been privileged to see it. The person turns black immediately. It is not up for discussion. The person will die instantly. He will be black. All the blood will dry up. That is power without control. Power without control. Power without control destroys. So you saw that even though Neman was open to an information. He received that information well and he went back to the king. Lord, is it time for us to build? And Jesus said, it is time for us to build. We stayed in our living room for four and a half years. RC and Lagos was in my living room for four and a half years. And I changed the, I changed the sofa in our, room, in our living room about two times. And every time I changed it, it took almost half a million from my pocket. 
And so I started saying, ah, ah, oh boy, now like this will continue. And, and, and the, the living room, you know, people will sit on the chair. You just come and look for where you can sit. They will sit down to the staircase and we will be teaching the Bible. So by the time I bought the second one, I got it and I said, you know what? I just call all the leaders. You know those kind of spiritual things, prophetic people. I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm perceiving that it's time for us to leave the living room. It was because of my chairs, though. But I use the word I am perceiving that it is time. Because you see, everywhere is full. Then one day I was praying. The Holy Ghost came to me and said, Ekbeleo, well done, Mr. Chair Owner. You are telling my people to leave the living room because of your chairs. I said, Lord, I never, I never meant it that way. He said, that was what was in your heart. Remember, I, I'm the one that gave you power to have these chairs. So I called my pastors and I confessed. I said, I'm sorry, oh, I beg. Nobody should leave again. Actually, when I said I perceive, ask them when you see them. I said, actually, when I said I perceive, it's time for us to move. The Lord just rebuked me. He said it was about my chairs. And that's the truth. It was the chairs. Like I just didn't know that that inside my heart. But I just felt, these chairs, they will, soon, they will soon sit on it and it will just go down. Now everything will be. And I called my wife. She said, ah, AJ, I was thinking of the same thing, oh. I said, when you come back, we need to repent. So, we now told the Lord. Because we are under submission. We now told the Lord, we aren't going anywhere anymore. We die here. We will stay in this parlor. If you like, oh, tell us to leave. If you like, don't tell us to leave. Somebody say submission. Submission is power. Under what? Power under control. You can have all the power upon the face of the earth. Because he would have just woken up that my wife has given me information. And he just saddled the donkey, packed treasuries. And they will say that he looted Syria. But because he was under authority, he was now backed up by that authority. And when he was backed up by that authority, he was able to go, not even telling the master that I'm going with, with, with gold and silver and some raiment. He went to the treasury of the king to take out what was required for his journey. That is the way you and I are. That there is a treasury of heaven that heaven needs to open to you to have access into everything that belongs to God. But because you don't have the life of submission, you are a roving beast. You are like a vagabond who don't know where he's going. You don't know the beginning of your life. You don't know the end. Because the issue of submission is a critical issue to the life of the believer. Did you remember that Jesus was saying to Peter after he caught the fish? He said, leave your fish and follow me. And I will make you the fishers of men. The only way the making process of God will find expression therefore in the life of Peter is when he submits. Because if you don't follow, I will not make you. But if you follow, I will do what? I will make you. So the first point you notice was he submitted what will bring solution to his life. He submitted it to the authority. And who is the authority of your life? Number one, your parent. Who is the authority of your life? One, your parent. It's in, it's in parenthood that we activate the principle of longevity. If you want to live long, listen, Matthew Ashimolo said this many years that changed my life. When I gave my life to Christ, my father used to booze, you know. He would say, Okay, Todoro, I'll say, Sir, carry a carry a carry a dinner of waiting. How many of you can speak Robo here? Carry a dinner, me da. I'll look at him and say, Popsina, wow. It means give me that beer there. Make I drink. I'll look at my father and I'll say, Popsina, wow. You know, they even look face. I don't burn again. They say, make I give you beer. He say, ah, now wow, Austin. If not like this Christianity be, me I no go be born again. Because you know even they respect your papa. Respect you don't have for me. You are saying, I, I know they look face, beer. If I had known those, if I, if I knew what I know today, I will go and carry the beer. Pako di atakwa. Membrendo, drink to salvation. In the name of Jesus, drink to salvation. I may not tell him, but I will, I will, I will blow in tongues. You know what changed my life? 
it was Pastor Matthew Ashimolo that was preaching. He said, even if your father is a herbalist, you must honor him. I said, eh? did I hear well? The days of tape, cassette. Some of you don't know how cassettes look like. The days of cassette, that we will rewind it. We say, this man, what did he talk? We will rewind. There is nothing that tells you two minutes, three minutes. We will rewind it. He said it. I rewind it again. Even if your father is a herbalist, you must honor him. Ah! I went to my father and knelt down. I said, I'm sorry for bringing this honor to you. I've disrespected you. I've disregarded you in this house. Please forgive me. Forgive me. Forgive me. I did it in the innocence of my heart and in the foolishness of my zeal. Have mercy. He said, it's okay. You have changed. You, have, you are growing. I'm, I'm grateful to God that you are born again. Submission. When you want to marry and they are not buying in, trust God that they will buy in. Pray. Because it's in that submission that you have the longevity of life. And what's the next submission? You submit to authority that God has placed over you. That is why you make sure that you keep relationships by revelation. You keep relationships by revelation. Jesus has 12. Jesus has 3. Jesus has 1. Models of relationship. My wife is the one that taught me. She said, AJ, I said, Ma. She said, there are friends that are for the outer court. All of you belong to sunlight. Barakbo. You laugh with them, you joke with them. And then there are friends that are in the middle court. Small sunlight. You can tell them a little about yourself. And then there are friends that are in the inner court. These are men you can unveil your bodies to. Men that you can say, place your heart on my chest like John and feel my heart beat. I'm about to be crucified. And John will not, John will not go out announcing that you're about to die. John will keep the, the form of the beat in his chest. Are you with me? So, submission is a critical ingredient for the life of the believer. A believer that wants to go far in God, a believer that wants to do, do things with the kingdom, must understand what it means to submit. When the Bible says that um, husband love your wife, and wife submit, you know the Bible says we should both submit in the Lord, in the fear of God. Submission is required for marriages to work. Where do you submit again? You submit in marriage. My God, there are some issues in marriage that what should settle it is a slap. But you know if you slap, you have become a bad example. So what you do is, if you do like this, you say, Kai. The Holy Ghost says, if you try it. So you know because of the love of God that has constrained you, you will rather wait and mature and grow. One of the places you will test the spirit of submission is not on the pulpit to member. It's in marriage. And that is why pastoring is dangerous. I don't know if God has been giving you people here who are way older than you by 20 years. And when they look at you, they say, Daddy. <laughs> and they, say, they don't call you Reverend Tony. Me, I can call you Tony now uh, because I'm your senior both in age and in ministry. So I can say, Tony, but if I come here tomorrow and I say, Tony, give me the mic, that's not submission. That's abuse. But the moment you give me mic and I'm still talking within my time, I have authority. But it does not mean that I will come to this place and I will violate him. In fact, Pastor Okpe, stand up. Pastor Okpe is a branch pastor of our ministry. If I go to his ministry, if I go to his church, if he's say, speaking blunder, anything he's doing, I'll just sit down. I'll just be writing. If he doesn't involve me, I will not involve myself. You know why? I have given him authority. I will not go there and abuse it. When I come to that place, even me, I am under him. So when I go there, if they don't say, Reverend Austin, do you have anything to say? And after service, I will not be offended because I understand the line of authority I understand the line of submission. Jesus was walking and he was going to pray for somebody who was sick. And there was this man whose son was sick. And while Jesus walked, he said, there was a detour. Say, Master, we need to go and pray for my servant. 
He said, okay, let us go. He said, master, don't go. For I'm a man under authority. Somebody say, I'm a man under authority. And I understand how authority functions. If I say unto this one, go this way, he goes. If I say unto that one, go that way, he goes. So I know that your word is an authority. It's a vehicle that brings changes. But the reason why that change will happen is because I understand how authority works. That the functionality and the conditionality of authority is that there is submission. So when I speak to this one, he goes. When I say to that one, he goes. You don't need to follow me to the house. You just speak the word. Your word will ride on the revelation of submission that I have. So the word, he said, mm, 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 I've never seen a man of faith like this. All through Israel. What do you, what do you, what do you are talking about? That was because the man is a military man. The man has been taught. What? Submission. So number one, you must be a man of submission. Pastor, let's sit down, please. Thank you. You must be a man and a woman of submission. You must know what it means to be somebody that submits to authority. All right? I remember one of my sons, I was going to get married some time ago, and I said to him, bro, this lady doesn't suit you. In fact, I didn't say this lady doesn't suit you. I know the lady was not suitable because even in my presence, she was disrespecting him. Not once, I be not twice, not three, not four, not five. By the fifth, I snapped. And I said, young lady, you know what we need to do now? Pastor, suspend this marriage. Wait until you people gain alignment. And they said, it's too late. They've gone far. And I said, well, me, I'm not coming for the wedding. I will not come. I stayed away. Not because I was bad. It was six months later, everybody knew I was correct. Another of, our past, another of our member was going to get married to a very fine girl. Very fine. This one, eh, she was like an angel. But I was her personal counselor. And I knew the issues that we were trying to resolve in her life. And she's fine. When we say pretty, she's pretty. Head to toe, her blood is clean. So this young man came to meet me and said, bro, man, I'm seeing this babe, I'll marry her. I said, bro, you'll see where, but uh, can, you, can you give me some time? You know what he went to tell the girl? I don't know why. Me, I want to marry you, but Reverend Austin is not allowing me to come. And the girl, hearing that, believed that I have released her secret. Because what, she was go what was going on in her life was a terrible matter that only I in RCM was aware. She opened up to me as a pastor. So I looked at that young man. I said, you've heard well, but give me some time. Don't go there yet. He went there and inverted the story. I said, I don't know why Reverend Austin doesn't want me to come. So the lady sent me a message, got offended and left RCM. And then the boy started misbehaving around me. I left it for close to two years. On the second year, I use this as an example in a meeting where he was seated. I said, there is a young man among us, and I was teaching on the subject of submission. When he said to me he wanted to marry, I told him to hold on. Very fine girl. But, Apostle Tony, this girl can masturbate in the office seven times. I'm not joking. In the toilet. She will go and come back and call me. I just masturbated. She will go and come back and tell me I just masturbated. Now, should I reveal her secret to the guy? No! There is the issue of integrity and confidentiality. I can't tell him, but I also needed to protect him. Because if he goes there, he will say, now so Reverend Austin daughters be. Meanwhile, we are on a journey of what? Deliverance. The girl left RCN. She became mental. Not because she left. Because that thing that was going on was too much. I sat down like a Catholic priest that was receiving confession every week. I would say, don't worry, sin no more. Jesus is with you. I will not condemn her. I was willing under God to bring her out. I love people. You know, if you know where God picked me from, I must be patient with such people. Yes. 
You are the one that came from a very good family. You have no, no sex. You are still a virgin. God bless you. Remain a virgin. Whatever happens to you, remain a virgin. It's not old school. It's the best. Some of us that were not, we opened our life to so many conflagrations of the devil. Make sure that nobody sees your nakedness. But should they have seen your nakedness? The man said, we have a soul, we have a sister, our well-beloved sister, who has no breast, and now she has breast. In other words, she has become, she's becoming mature. What we are, I've been playing with my sister, but now we have a sister who now has breast. Her beauty is becoming open. She's been enhanced. What do we do? He now said, in the fear of the, the, the sister not messing up, God now gave a wisdom. He said, if she has been a dog, He said, if she has been a door, put a wall. That means if she has been penetrated into, it doesn't mean she should continue. Put a wall. So that nobody can go there again. So such were the kind of people we were. Men that were addicted to sex. All of a sudden, Jesus brought me out. Do you think I will have the mouth to condemn somebody else? Never. So she kept crying. I kept, I kept staying. I kept telling her, you will be out, myself and my wife. Don't worry, God will deliver you. But a brother that lacks submission, make sure that that process was not seen through. So when you come to Apostle Tony and he says, hold on, sometimes you may say, why? And if he says, he get wait, waiting day for, waiting day between five and six, waiting day before six, past six, it means there is a story you don't want to, we don't want to tell you. Respect it and wait for the time. You must understand the place. I may not finish all my points because of time, okay? Uh, you, may under, you, you will have to understand the place of submission. That if you are not submitted, you are doing yourself harm. Many years ago, I wanted to stop my business and quit everything I was doing to go into ministry full time. And that was in the year 2000. Um, I went into full time 2020. It took two years. So um, 2020, that means 2018. 2018, the demands of ministry began to grow. The RCN clan in Lagos was growing and expanding. And I called my spiritual father. I heard God. I thought. And I said, Papa, I said, so I said, look, I've reconciliated my entire money now. It's in my account. In millions. It's in my account. I've, 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 I've be I began to wind down on buying trucks. I used to run a logistic company, Us Gem Enterprise. I worked for the likes of Dangote, Crown Flower, Bobo Drink. There is the dancer food here in Asaba. My trailers were coming here, okay, in Asaba, Aba, Potakot. My trailers were coming all over Lagos, um, all over Nigeria. Um, name it Sokoto, Gombe, Taraba, Kano. I, I can tell you today, if I stand here now and I begin to recall my logistics training, I can tell you how many liters of fuel will take you to Lagos and bring you back. Those were the kind of trainings we embarked on as a logistic person. I can tell you, I can tell you the, your ATA, all right? So, your expected time of arrival and all of that and all of that. And then all of a sudden, I just felt God was leading me into ministry. And I spoke to Apostle Arabe, my spiritual father. Step, step on the keyboard for me quickly. And he said, hey, son, you are not going anywhere. Continue the business. Continue. And I said, Papa, I'm tired. I want to go back into my calling. I've been away for years. And now I'm back, this is about four, five years, and I need to continue as a full-time minister. He said, it's not yet time. You are going to live with your head's eye. I said, no, how do you want to live with your head's eye again? I have monies in my account. I just want to divest. And Papa said, no. That's my spiritual father. My spiritual father said, no, against my will and against my wish. And I said, okay. I went back to God. I knelt down and said, Father, this man that you said should father me, said I should this man that you said should father me. He said I should go back to my business. I went back and bought new trailers. Do you know what? The moment I bought those trailers, another line of financial explosion opened. 2018. 2019. By 2019, August 14, I was going to be 40. And the word was spoken over my life. It came into his heart by Dr. Tunde Bakari. He said, now, it is destiny. Let destiny come into his heart. That was August 13th. And by August 14th, I went to kneel down. And the Lord said, son, it is time. Now it was clear. 
The other time I could second guess myself. Now the voice was very clear. The voice said to me, it is time. It is for this reason why I have set you out. Go judge the pharaohs of your generation, kill the herod, that my people will receive their inheritance. Not I have called you to for the rebirth of the apostolic, what? For the rebirth of apostolic Christianity. I was not the one that God told that. He was Apostle Arame, our spiritual father. You see, under that commission, my commission is finding expression. Why? Because I understand the language of submission. I didn't come to say, hey, Apostle Arame, my call is go and judge the pharaohs of your generation and kill the herald. No, I came in and in the year 2020, 2019, August 14, when God spoke to me, he said, look, son, I have spoken to your father already. When you meet with him, August 15, tell him what I have said to you. And then apostle called me and said, go and represent me in a meeting. And I said, where? He said, go to Uyo, represent me there. And I went to Uyo, represented apostle, right? And then I went and I preached a message. The title of the message is Understanding Transition. I finished the message. I came to my room and I knelt down. And the Lord said, who asked you to preach that message? I said, you gave me the message. That was when I learned the difference between your personalized message and the message you preach publicly. That you must learn to know what you should receive and keep until the appointed time comes. It was that season. I knew the difference between what God is telling me and what God is telling me to go and tell the body of Christ. That is not everything you hear you say. There are things that are for you. So he said, that message was for you. That message is a road map of your calling when you are 40 now. That message was not for you. It was not for the public. I repented and I called the man that I preached for, Pastor Jaffet of the Pistis. I said, bro, that's my life. I don't live, I don't live fake. I said, oh God, that message when I preach, no before now, not for me. See what thing God talk. And then the Lord said, when you see apostle tonight, tell him. So Papa came in. I'm still talking submission. Papa came into the room and I said, sir, I have something to tell you. I went to his hotel room. I said, the Lord said my season as a businessman has ended. That he's calling me into full time. And he said, he has spoken to you. I should tell you. But Apostle just shouted, hey, Ubare. I said, Papa, yes, sir. He said, as I was coming, the Lord just spoke to me that my time has ended him. And that he will give him a sign today. You know what the sign was? Me, I am coming to tell him. The Lord said I should go in. He give him confirmation so that because the work, he has gotten to the place where the career is sweet. He has gotten to the place where all of us will be making big money because the next promotion was going to land him to man an entire state. So me, I can come in with my company paper and say, give me supply. And he will stamp it. And I will do supplies. Not still, you know. I will do the proper supply. Because he will be the head of the entire Asaba. He will be the head of the... So God... So that period, it is easy to second guess. Maybe in my mind, they tell me this thing. Meanwhile, he's an apostle. Somebody say apostle. Yeah, don't tell him I told you. So I went to him. He shouted. I said, hey, so I'm going to go full time like this. He was in the next rank. Do you know that that rank came? But the Lord has spoken. Apostle would have been a fantastic big man, big man in PPRA. But guess what? When the Lord told him to go and the promotion came, not up to two years, their department was crapped. The organization was crapped and they merged them with PPRA. No, is it PPRA? He was working with PPRA. They merged them with TPR. So now there is no PPRA. So if he had disobeyed and didn't submit to God, he would have been eating the bread of affliction. He will not have the luxury he has now to travel around. Help me tell your neighbor, submission in the kingdom is key. That was how the Lord delivered us. And so Papa said, all right, give me the road walk. I said, I don't have any road walk. I don't have any plan. The Lord said to me, the season has come. And since Jesus said the season has come, I'm going to give my wife a notice. It was August. I'm going to give my wife notice of four months. 
I'll be home for four months to gather myself and bring out my entire money from the business I'm doing. I didn't tell my drivers that I'm going full time. I allowed them. They just noticed that I was selling off my trucks one after the other. No problem. I removed all my money from that business, divested, and I went into full time January 1st, 2020. Now, I went into full time January 1st, 2020, and by March 2020, there was COVID. I went back to God. I said, You told me to go full time in 2020. You didn't tell me there would be COVID. What will happen to my wife and my children? You know what Jesus told me? He said, Son, sit down, watch and see. You cannot be a man of authority if you don't understand submission. Naaman understood submission. That's the first thing I want to say to you. You must, you must understand what it means to submit. You know if you have the call of God and people are around to threaten you, you will not be afraid. You are the one that, you are the recipient of the call. It wasn't Lot that received the call. Abraham, Abraham was the recipient of the call. So number one, you must understand and you must believe submission. There are many of you who are suffering needless battle because you lack submission. There are many of you who are struggling needless pain because you lack submission. When somebody comes to see Apostle Tony, before he seeks for Apostle Tony, he says, Sir, as I was talking to you yesterday, I received a vision. The Holy Ghost said to me, to this morning, before I came to you, the Holy Ghost said to me, the Holy Ghost said to me, if a young man is telling you the Holy Ghost said, the Holy Ghost said, how do you talk to him? What do you tell him? Are you with me? Are you with me? That's number one. Number two, what happened? Number two. You are still having a little bit of time. Number two, the Bible said it was a young lady that went to her madam and said to her madam, Madam, she said, daughter, talk to me. She said, ah, I wish that your husband can go to Israel. If he goes to Israel, there is a prophet there that will, oh, that will heal him. Number two, every man that will amount into the seventh deep must understand counsel. Must understand counsel. What did I say? You must understand counsel. You must be open to the spirit of counsel. You must understand the spirit of counsel. The Bible says, In the multitude of counsel, there what? There'll be safety. Your safety is in timely counsels that come to you. Timely counsel that comes to you, timely counsel that you receive. The man heard the counsel. Abby, do you know who brought the counsel? A slave. That is why you must know how to respond to counsel. If you don't know how to respond to counsel, it will lead me to the next point, but let me let me run, let me not run ahead of my time. If you don't know how to respond to counsel, there will be no safety for you. There will be no deliverance for you. You must know how to yield to counsel. However, there are two kinds of counsel. Give me Proverbs chapter 42. That thing is too loud. Give me Proverbs chapter 42 verse 3. Give me Proverbs chapter 42 verse 3 quickly. Proverbs chapter 2 verse 43. When I was in my... Proverbs... Ah, sorry, Job's 42, Job 42. Job 42, verse 3. Somebody help me read if you are there. You asked, who is this who hides counsel without knowledge? What translation? Give me, give me my translation. Give me King James, old one. Give me old King James. Who is he? I'm looking for the one that says, Who is this that darkened counsel without knowledge? Somebody said, Darkened counsel. Oh no, if I had time, I would have shown you darkened counsel of the king of Solomon, of the son of Solomon, who was supposed to become a king. And he called the elders and said, Oh elders, what do you say I should advise? I've just been called that it's time for me to take the throne of my father 
and, and, and they said to me, I should, I should go and think on it. I need counsel. What do we do? Give me counsel because I need to go and speak to them. And they said to him, oh, you see the way your father dealt with us. Like you, for you to be able to become a king that will last in this place, you need to accept responsibility for leadership and serve the people. That when you serve the people, they will in return serve you forever. He will serve them for a generation. They will in return serve him forever. He took that counsel and then he went and called his generation, the Gen Z generation. The generation that don't have history, they don't know what was going on. Generation that don't know when, when there were prophets who prophesied over Nigeria and the presidents, the, um, the, the, the presidents of the nation were threatening them. The people who have no story about Nigerian revival. You are here now, you are praying fire, 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 fire. If I tell you to tell me the foremost, foremost preachers of this land, you probably don't know them. So when history is about, when God is about to break out, you don't even have a leg of history where you can lean on to say this kind of thing cannot happen again in my time. Because if you don't know history, you will repeat history. So he went to his generation and they said, tell them my father beat you guys with stick. Now we beat you with rod. My father added bodies to you like two times. And we add the body 10, 13 times. You know, it was a counsel he received. When they finished hearing him, they said, it's okay. To your tent, O oh Israel. He meant that let us all scatter. You see, the entire city of Israel scattered on counsel. Give me Proverbs chapter 20 verse. Is it 20 verse 5 we checked the other time? 20 verse 5. Proverbs chapter 20 verse 5 on counsel if you don't understand how to navigate life with counsel you can fall into darkened counsel he said counsel in the heart of man is like deep water somebody said counsel is deep i can't hear you bro counsel is deep it was a young girl that brought counsel let me give you two scriptures when the lord said to joseph when the lord called joseph and said where are your brothers go and look for them and give them food to eat okay do you know the Bible said, and Joseph was wondering about. That is a man with a dream. He was wondering about. He was wondering, meaning he didn't know where his brethren were. He was just going about. He was, he was vacillating. He was, he was looking for his brothers. The Bible said, and a certain man appeared. And he said unto the certain man, please, did you see my brothers? A certain man that appeared is not a Jewish man. It was, a, it was that man that pointed. He said, take this way. I have seen some men. As you go, you will meet them. That is number one. Number two, when Ziklag was burned down, do you know the person that showed them the way? An Egyptian slave. An Egyptian slave. You would have wanted to kill him, but the counsel is in his mouth. If you kill him, you kill your solution. If you don't understand how to navigate, you see, you must be careful. Pastor Zach said something in our church that blew my mind. You know what he said? He said, it's only demons, only demons, and say, how did he say it? I remember. Eh? If you listen only to God, you are acting like the devil. Because it's only Satan that listens to God alone. You don't understand it, but it's only Satan that listens to God alone because he doesn't listen to you. He listens to the God in your inside. So if you are the type that is the, the only person you listen to is the Holy Spirit, we need to check your salvation. You don't understand this. Oh, it just, you just got it. If, if as you are now, the only person that can speak to you is the Holy Spirit, you are in trouble. It means you are not recognizing other graces in men that you don't have. You must understand the place of counsel. 
He said, counsel in the heart of a man is deep. So there are men who carry counsel. The what, what, what announced Joseph? Was it demon chasing? Was it demon casting? No. It was counsel. The Bible says, words rightly spoken. They are like medicine in the heart. Words fitly spoken. He said, you are waking me morning by morning. You teach me what to say to the weary. Come on. Come on. You must be a woman that understands the spirit of counsel. He said, counsel in the heart of a man is like deep water, but a man of understanding will draw it out. When I sit with wise people, I know. When I sit with foolish ones, I know. When a man is giving me a counsel, I know. Tony, you've never been in a place where you were praying about something and you are expecting the Holy Spirit to speak to you. And then you went to a bar market. As you, as you were conversing, somebody just passed and said something and the Holy Ghost said, did you hear what he said? And you are right to say the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Because you wouldn't have heard if the Holy Ghost didn't open your ears to amplify what was said. You were, you were not the recipient. The Holy Ghost just used the... That is what happened when donkey was talking. The, you, the, 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 the money has taken his attention. The gift has taken over. He cannot hear God. So God now made donkey to speak. And donkey brought counsel. He said, since you have been riding on me, have I disobeyed you before? Have I disobeyed you before? Today, I have not spoken before. I don't know. How, what, what sound does donkey make? Huh? Break. Pray. Uh -huh. The donkey only pray. Quack, quack, quack. But today, I open my mouth and I say, Balaam, are you foolish? Balaam, can't you see that I'm not the one in charge? The Holy Ghost has taken over me because the Holy Ghost gave you body language. You didn't understand. So the counsel came from donkey. He still proceeded. Counsel in the heart of a man is like what? Deep waters. What do we need to draw counsel? Somebody say understanding. So when men are talking to you, you sit down and you listen so that understanding can be quickened. That is when counsel is fashioned. You know what I love about Papa? I don't love Papa on the altar. I love Papa when we are traveling. When we are traveling, you say, oh, boy, I'll say, sir. So you see that thing? See why I said this? Oh, boy, if you want to go far, do this, do this, do this. That is when I ask questions, deep questions. If there is anything I got from that man, it's a spirit of wisdom and counsel. When I came to him, I was raw. He said, look, I know you are anointed, but you need diplomacy to rule men. You don't just use power. You need to be diplomatic. Teach, speak, be exemplary. You don't just teach, be exemplary. When we are driving in the car, they will say, bro, 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 see, 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 see. Sometimes the body can come and we will talk for four, five hours. I'm just drawing counsel. I'm drawing counsel such that every time you meet me and you ask me a question, there is an answer. You know why? Because I'm, I'm, I'm digging my roots in wisdom. Knowledge pops up, but wisdom brings safety. Knowledge is informative, but wisdom is directive. I want to be able to direct the, the lives of men such that when they collide, at the end of it, they will see solution that this counsel worked. Because in the multitude of counsel, there be safety. But only men of understanding can draw it out. So you see, the man yielded to counsel. And the counsel came, step number three. Do not despise men. Despise no one. That's the step number three. He adhered to the counsel. But where did the counsel come from? From a servant. From a slave. I want to say this to you. That the package of grace is not beautiful. The package of grace is not beautiful. The package of grace becomes beautiful when you obey. The package of grace is not beautiful. 
I want to drill that in. The package of grace is not beautiful. The expected package is not how God works. How? They were expecting Jesus, a king that will come with a uniform. They were expecting Jesus, a king that will come on a horse. They were expecting Jesus, a king that will come in a raiment. They were expecting Jesus, a king that will come into Israel with armies behind him and say, all of you, where are you? I am Emmanuel. Now I'm here. Where is King Herod? Even Herod was thinking that was how the king was coming. So he killed all the firstborns, all the boys. Because grace does not come in a beautiful package. You need revelation to catch it. So Jesus was born in a manger. You need revelation to obey him. You need revelation to follow him. Because when he was born, he was not born in the palace. He was born where? In a manger. So when the slave girl spoke, if the man never yielded, do you know that he yielded to counsel twice? And those two counsel came from slaves. You don't get me. When you read 13, the servant said to him, Master, this man that is advising you, we have nothing to lose. If we obey him, to go and wash in Jordan. What do you have to lose? He said, why didn't he come out to speak to me? Give me 2 Corinthians. I'm speaking from my spirit. Give me 2 Corinthians chapter 2. From verse 13. Said, Please hurry up, I beg you. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 13. No, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 from verse 13. Good. These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches. Can you see that? These things we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Let's go on. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are what? Foolishness. That's what grace does. The package of grace comes in, in, in modicums of foolishness, in doses. It doesn't make sense. I read the book many years. The book is titled When God Doesn't Make Sense. Written by Dr. James Dobson. He said, But they are foolish to him. A man a natural man cannot understand the package of grace. It would take a man that looks away to understand the package of grace. Let me tell your neighbor, deep ocean flows with majestic silence. Ocean, no, they compete. Seas don't compete. Have you seen a sea dry up before? But you see well dry. Have you seen a river dry? Yes. But you will never see an ocean dry. Because ocean has violence. But they know they, when the violence of the ocean hits the bank, it goes back and it settles. When you, when you chase it again, it comes, it goes back. You know why? It knows the authority and the grace that she has. Because every mighty ocean upon the face of the earth has boundaries. And the boundaries were not given by science. The boundaries were given by God. That's why every time God wants to invade, science will say, Hurricane Katrina is coming. They don't know how to stop it. It must take its course. What keeps the oceans? Have you, have you not heard of that song? As the ocean rises, what do they say? When that ocean rises, bro, there is a contention and there is a boundary. You know why? The grace of God steadies it. He said, what are layered the old mountains that you flee? There is a package of grace. So when Jesus came, he's a grace. He's the one to deliver mankind from sin. But he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many that received him, to them he gave power. To become 
to become to become it means the ones that accepted his revelation it is to them that he gave power that they might become what the sons of God. if you don't understand what it means not to despise men you will walk past your deliverer please as you journey through life don't forget what i want to tell you the consignments of grace find expression in men the consignment of grace it finds expression in men i was on my own doing my thing he doesn't we don't talk it was just it was papa that sent my number to him and said Ukbore will come and represent me and that was all when you are a carrier of grace you don't need to shout it will find expression When you hear a man saying, Don't do you know who I am? You are nobody. It means you are cloaking, you have a security challenge. That was why I said to you, I don't like that name. I just want the grace to be seen. Don't call me a prophet, don't write it in my name. Just leave me with Austin. I'm okay. In fact, if you see me, call me Austin. If I call you a Jomu and your heart shake, it means that you see, uh, this guy no get respect. Come on, I've been to UK for worship. I've 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 I've, I've shook I sh I've I've shaken the nations. Why is he calling me? If you need prefix to be secured, we will put suffix to remove it. If you cannot attend to your name, his name shall be called Jesus. And there was no problem. So when John is going to talk to me, he will say, Jesus, this thing you said, I didn't understand. He didn't say, shut up. Call me Elder Jesus. If they don't put a prefix, you know there was a church, they said, let us welcome Elder M. Let us welcome, let us welcome Uncle Joshua. His wife was tapping him. Uncle Joshua Aremu, they were tapping him. He refused. Until the young man said, oh, I'm sorry. Let us welcome Deacon Elder. He said, yes, that is my name. And then he walked out and the wife did like this. One day, Apostle Arame went for a meeting. He was late. So he got there with bathroom, bathroom slippers and he sat down and he started praying. And everybody was like, is this the man that is going to talk to us? With his twisted face. Is this the man that will talk with sleepers? They all despised it. He knew. He, you know, Papa, he just stayed. When they said, it's time to have our guest minister, Apostle Aramel Osai, he just stood up and collected the mic. Hallelujah. While I was there, the Holy Ghost said to me, when he released the word, he said, Holy Ghost, move now. All of them that despised him were on the floor. First, when he was done, he dropped the mic. He didn't spend five minutes there. He left. They started running after him. Do you understand this? Do you know what Jesus said? He said, he that wants to sit in the front, it is better you sit at the back and hold you by the hand and bring you to the front. That for you to sit in the front and they hold you by the hand and take you to the back. Come on now. You, you need to understand what it means to graciously wait. Wait until the Lord announces you. Because the package of grace is not beautiful. Never forget. I can take you to Isaiah chapter 58. Where you will see, is it Isaiah 58 now? Where you will see the grace of God, how he was battered, the body, the fashion of his countenance was altered. Jesus was nothing to look on. There was no beauty. He went through disfiguration so that you can be reconfigured. He went through disfiguration so that you can have configuration, so that the configuration of your personality will be intact. So he was disfigured for your sake. The package of grace is not beautiful. 
But when you yield yourself, the Bible says, who for the joy that was set before him, he did what? What do you do to the cross? Help me, help me. You know his Bible study. What do you do to the cross? You endure the cross. He despised the shame. Ojomu, it means that when he was walking, people were saying, is this not the son of the carpenter? He's saying he's the son of God. And they are calling him the son of the carpenter because that is the context they knew. And Jesus despised them because the package of grace is not beautiful. But who for the sake, when he saw the glory that was ahead, he despised what? He endured what? The cross. So as a believer that wants to walk in grace, you must learn to despise shame. You must learn to endure. Because you cannot be a disciple if you don't carry your cross. And what is the cross? The cross is the great divide between life and death. So you will learn how to despise it. Let me give you the final. How many have I given now? Oh, just three. Let me give you the final one so that I can prophesy on you. There are seven. You will go and find out the rest. I want to use about 10-15 minutes to talk to you. Okay, I will give you number five. Number three, number four, build relationships. Build relationships, form alliances. Relationships that will be born out of divine revelation. Because in the days to come when you are in trouble, oh, oh join me, Jesus. Have you been in situations where you couldn't pray? And you are a pastor. Where you sat down like this, like Abbe. When Abbe lost her father, she was on her way to travel. To go and preach when she got a call. That your dad is late. And her mom was courageous and said, Abbe, continue. But ask her now. When she got to the place, I, wrote, I read the write-up. She said when she was singing, she, she didn't feel like singing again. Because this time around, the lioness of Kavar. We cover until we are what? Until we are what? Until we are struck. But this day, she could not cover. Because the, the journey is not for the, for the strong. Neither is victory for the most strategic. No, no. A day comes when you will have to rely on the prayers of others to stand. You must have alliances. Jesus picked up his cross and he fell. Somebody say his cross. And he fell. He could not continue. Then a young man from Africa. That is why I know that Africa is the last phase of the coming revival. Because the man that bore the cross.